I feel like uh, games based on anime is always uh, an interesting topic because as somebody that loves both games and anime, you can imagine how excited I was when I heard that you know such a thing exists. But unfortunately, more often than not, most anime games aren't up to par. Now, I'm not saying that all old anime games are good. I just think that over the years, the focus of developers has probably changed. Anyway, don't worry, don't worry. I'm about to tell you why I think so. So just sit down somewhere over there. I think there's some space. Sit down over there and I'll tell you why. Okay, so I might have a lot to say today. So you might catch me looking at my phone a lot. That's probably because I have my script on here. So forgive me. When talking about games, I like to talk about Naruto and Dragon Ball. Not only are Naruto and Dragon Ball part of the big five of anime, I think Naruto and Dragon Ball really set the example for the biggest anime games of nowadays or even back then. I know a lot of other franchises and whatnot have made games, but these games are the ones that are the most notable, if I may say so. So on that note, I want us to hop into my time machine and we're gonna go back to 2002. I say so because I think this is the year when a lot of uh, anime games started springing up, the, the good ones, because <laughs> I know they've been some before 2002, but this is when anime games really started to get a little bit refined. So in 2002, Dragon Ball Z Budokai dropped. And before this, a lot of the Dragon Ball games were not that great, but when Dragon Ball Z Budokai dropped, you can imagine the excitement that was there, because like, the game really blew up because it kind of handled a bit like Tekken. It's kind of like playing Tekken, but instead of like the usual Tekken characters, it's instead like Goku and you know, Yamcha and all your other favorite characters. So I can imagine why this blew up. So the Budokai games were good, everybody enjoyed them and whatnot. But then fast forward to 2005 is when the Budokai Tenkaichi games dropped. So the Dragon Ball Budokai Tenkaichi games were way better than just Budokai, of course. I mean, they added on an extra name. Dragon Ball Z Budokai. I mean, it has to be good if the title is that long. In this one, the fighting was being done in a 3D arena, so you could fight and your characters could move in sort of a 360 type movement, which was really different from the Budokai games because they were more like 2D really most of the time, like, like I said, like Tekken or like Street Fighter or something like that. So this was really different for everybody to see. It was different from what was already on the market. Not only that, there were now way more characters than from Budokai. Like, Okay, I know you could say there's technically not really more because some characters were more like repeats of a certain character just because they have different forms. So like, for example, maybe like Goku, base Goku is like a character on his own and then like uh, Super Saiyan Goku is a character on his own. But I think that was a really good system because at least it's better than trying to cram a lot of dif a lot of different forms into one character that has like a ton of forms it's better to just separate them into like different characters apart from that Budokai Tenkaichi also added a lot of different modes for the ca for the players to enjoy like i can't seem to remember <laughs> what modes they were but i think i'm going to flash them onto screen right now but like there were a bunch of different modes so you if you got bored of playing a certain mode you can go to another and i bet that kept people really playing the game so budokai tenkaichi 3 is where fans really fell in love with the budokai tenkaichi uh, series because apparently it's the best one a lot of things were better in there the fighting handled really nicely as well and a lot of fans still say that budokai tenkaichi 3 is the best dragon ball game to date because the game made it feel like you were playing through the anime, you know? You felt like you were rushing through these fights, you know? Just like you'd seen the anime, you were going here, there, and you know? The fights felt fast-paced and smooth. 
you know it felt true to the anime and i think that's why a lot of fans were able to fall in love with budokai tenkaichi 3 i could go on and on about how good budokai tenkaichi 3 is but okay we have we have to move on this isn't a tenkaichi review so while our time machine is still refueling, I want us to look at some uh, older Naruto games. So in 2003, the first game in Naruto Ultimate Ninja series was released. This isn't to be confused with Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm though. These are two different. Actually in Japan, I think it was known as Narutimate Ninja or something like that. I won't go too much into Naruto Ultimate Ninja, but it's a very good game that paid attention to detail as well that also was able to kind of imitate the feel of the anime. Like one thing I liked about Naruto, the Naruto Ultimate Ninja series is that, like for example, for, for Sharingan wielders had this mechanic called Sharingan mode. And with Sharingan mode, you could copy the whole moveset of your opponent. And I think that was really cool because that's essentially what the Sharingan is supposed to do. Like in the anime, it says that if you use your Sharingan on somebody, you could use it to essentially copy their moves. But I don't know why in the later games, this mechanic isn't used anymore. And I thought it was a really good one. They really should use it more. But anyway, I'm not here to talk about these games. I just wanted you to get a little background on this. The game in the Naruto games I want to talk about are Naruto Rise of a Ninja and Naruto The Broken Bond. In my opinion, these games are like peak Naruto games. Like they're the best Naruto games I have ever seen. I, I really like these games because they're very different from a lot of the Naruto games we have in that these games are, are RPGs. You know what an RPG is? It's a role-playing game, you get your character, you play as the character, you, you have um, usually ability, mechanics and stuff that you have to level up. You basically have to be the character and help them grow, watch them grow and stuff like that. So in those games, you were Naruto and you were helping him grow, you know? It was an open world, it had two modes actually. It had an open world mode where you could roam uh, different places from the, as seen in the anime, as well as also just like a fighting mode. And usually when you are playing the open world mode, you would end up uh, like you could come across like different ninjas and you have to fight them and all that. And it would switch from the whole open world thing to like a 3D fighting arena, kind of like uh, Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm that we have today. And I thought that was really cool because the game had way more to offer than just fighting, just going from fight to fight, fight this character, fight that character. You know, you were at, you could actually find yourself roaming like Konoha because that was like the base. That was the hub, if I could call it that. That was your main hub. You were usually there. Before you go for any missions, you'd start from there and stuff. And I think that's really cool. You would also, as Naruto, of course, you help him level up so you'd you'd help him earn different abilities for himself so like when you first start out in the game you'd find yourself uh probably just running around and all that and and traveling feels inconvenient for you but you could level him up to be able to use chakra and when he uses his chakra you could run on the walls go and that would enable you to go from place to place easier i also found it super cool that for you to use jutsus in the game it kind of made you do a series of button presses or like holding the triggers and I feel like that was really cool because it kind of mimics the complexity of weaving signs for a jutsu because nowadays it's like just press triangle and oh you've done the jutsu but I think it's really cool like if you want to do shadow clone jutsu like hold our left back this that and you have to move the sticks in a certain way you know it kind of feels like you yourself are kind of like weaving the signs you know and i think that was really cool i think this Nar these naruto games had almost everything that would keep me hooked open world system you know you could explore and whatnot the fighting system was good as well there was the whole jutsu weaving thing system and there were mini games so i think this these games are the best naruto games in my opinion sadly they're only for xbox so I never really got to play them. But they are still the best Naruto games I've seen and heard of. So now that I've briefly talked about some of these old anime games, I just want to make it clear that I'm not saying that all old anime games are good. Because I mean like, look at Samurai Champloo Sidetracked. 
<laughs> you didn't know what that game was, did you? <laughs> I just wanted us to kind of have a background to see what anime games, an example of what old anime games were like before we go to look at what anime games are like now. So I might be biased, but I'm mostly going to be talking and comparing about uh, comparing Storm because I didn't really play a lot of Dragon Ball games back in the day. I'm sorry, but I have a list. So basically, some of my qualms are like, first of all, the newer Storm games usually just feature a story mode, a versus mode, and an online versus mode. Sometimes if you're lucky, you get like one of those collection mode thingies where you get to see like maybe cutscenes from the game or collectibles, name tags for online gaming, and that's usually it. Like that, that is it, you know, but it had character they they usually do have character customization but it's not as in-depth as character customization from like the older games for example because like in the older games you could make fire based characters use water based moves and I, like just for the heck of it and i think that was really cool but like now you can't really customize anything you can just pick which move a character prioritizes for their special or something like that and I think that just makes it all fall flat. I remember when I got uh, Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm 4. It was gonna be my first Storm game. I was excited. I didn't even know about the Storm series at the time. Got on my console, started playing it. I was addicted. Like for a month straight, I was playing it every day, doing the story mode. I was playing versus mode with my brothers and all that. I finished the story mode, it was good, I had fun. So then I started doing the, there's some open world type thing, but it's so bare bones. Like you can't even do much in that world. So I did that, finished that, played versus mode with my brothers and the CPUs until they both became predictable. After that, I was done with the game. Essentially, there was nothing to pull me back into it. There was no feature that could offer me replayability unless i started playing online but i i don't do that so for me essentially my time in the game was done there were no mini games to pull me back no secrets in the open world that i didn't discover because the open world is so simple you can literally find almost everything you need to find within what a few hours so at this point this is when i really want to bring up the point that the problem with anime games is that especially these days is that they lack replayability there's nothing that will bring me back to a game to an anime game apart from nostalgia like i will leave an anime game for some time and like maybe after a while i remember that i have it like oh my god i have this game you know and i play it and i play it not even for an hour just like for a few fights and i'm like you know what i'm done let me play something else. They really like replayability. They like features that could bring replayability, like mini games, like I said. But a lot of these new anime games really just don't have that. Another problem that I have with anime games these days is that a lot of them just feel like cash grabs, you know? Like it just feels like the devs are trying to build out a game while the weebs are still into this or that, so that because they know that the people are going to buy it, you know? Because I've seen like I was reading an article where somebody had said that they played Naruto the broken board and they said they had never watched Naruto before that but after playing that game they were so motivated to watch Naruto they were like you know maybe I want to get into this because I feel like games back then or older games you know gave a good understanding of what the anime could be because you know the game wouldn't just throw you in there and you're given a bunch of mechanics and you see like cool cool superpowers cool things are happening on the screen but you like barely know anything that's happening you know those older games would take the time to explain to you they would world build you know you understand everything that's going on around you and you end up going you know what maybe this is something i want to watch you know they were they were non-weeb friendly like a, a lot of non-weebs actually were saying that uh like Naruto and the Broken Bone. Sorry, I'm using this a lot as an example. I was researching a lot about it. So a lot of non-weebs said they were converted into being a weeb because they were interested in the world of Naruto because of playing that game. But like a lot of games nowadays don't really, they're not really targeted for everyone because they are targeted at the weebs because they know that the weebs will buy them. 
they're not made for your neighbor who probably has never seen Goku in his life. Unfortunately, a lot of old anime, a lot of anime games of now are not weeb friendly. So while I have your attention, if I have your attention, I want us to look at another uh, case study of, a, of an anime game, a popular anime game. So this game is called Jump Force. I don't know, I know like some of you have probably heard about Jump Force. You know, when Jump Force was coming out, I was stoked. Like I was super excited because I had played J-Stars, which is the game that comes before Jump Force. Not a lot of people know about J-Stars actually, but J-Stars was released as a celebration of Shonen Jump's 45th anniversary. And basically the game is like a crossover of um, of like a lot of a lot of the series that are in the Shonen Jump magazine. So you had like characters like Luffy versus Naruto. You had like you could use Toriko from Toriko. <laughs> you could use Goku, of course. You know, like a lot of the big, uh, big name anime Shonen Jump anime were there. And like I played it. I had I have it on PS4. Played it with my brothers. It's so fun. It's goofy though. It's not like uh, it's not the best, <laughs> but it was fun. You know, it's one of those games where. You know that it's not going to be highly rated on anybody else's list but it's just like one of those that you would give like five stars just because you enjoyed it like it was super fun especially being able to play as some of my favorite characters i mean gintoki from gintama was in this game and he's very fun to use you know so you know imagine after playing that i was excited i was like okay you know i heard about jump force jump force was looking cool it was looking like they actually had a budget for it and i was like Ooh, okay you know i'm invested you know they showed us light yeah i mean they were showing us a bunch of cool stuff they were also showing us stuff that it's like the the story for i've never really played jump force but it's like the story for jump force is like the anime world and the the real world end up merging so like you find yourself fighting in real life stages like like Times Square and stuff like that, you know. And I thought this whole idea of fighting in like real world locations was like super cool, you know. Like everything they were showing us was hype. They were showing us cool trailers, blah 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 blah. So fast forward uh, to 2019, I think game drops. I couldn't get it, so of course I went to my best friend YouTube to see how things were going. And oh my god, the game was a flop. I was so sad. I couldn't believe it. I remember when it launched, I remember story mode was incomplete or something like that, or there was no story mode, but there were issues with story mode. Uh, character models were glitchy, especially your own custom your own custom characters. They were having issues like you'd have like long necks out, out of nowhere and stuff like that. The character models were so stiff. I was so sad. Like they look good. Like if they were just to be figures just sitting there, they would look good. But then when they have to talk, that's where it all goes wrong. Like they talk like they've had Botox injections and they're trying not to like rip their face. Like they talk like, uh, hey Goku, have you, uh, you've come to face me and it's like, yes, I will face you and you'll die. Like it's, it's so weird, you know? Like that's not even the, the half of the problems that Jump Force had. Like it was just so inherently bad. You know, I I was really sad because I had high hopes for this game because it looked like J Stars but better J Stars with a budget, but of course they went and just what did whatever they did and it was it's a bad game now. But after all that rambling, what exactly is my point? Well. I think that anime games nowadays are really not being given enough love by their devs or whoever is making them. They're not being given as much focus as they were back then. Because back then you could tell that you know a lot of love was being put into these games. They were making it, trying to make it feel as much as possible like you were actually just playing the anime. But like nowadays, a lot of anime games are just cash grabs. They're trying to build out the game so that, you know, while the, while the trend is still hot, while ABC anime is still trending, so that people could buy it. And anime games also lack replayability. And I think that's what makes them, from, makes them different from a lot of uh, games in general. They lack replayability. Once you've played through the story mode, you've gotten bored with the versus mode, you're essentially done because 
they're not even like fighting typical fighting games where you are always constantly learning the mechanics blah 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 like a lot of these anime games are very easy to learn like the fighting is really easy to learn like once you learn it everything becomes easy and unless you're playing with somebody else of course to keep things lively but otherwise once you're done with once you're done with story mode in an anime game, you are done. That's it. Has nothing else to offer you. What do you guys think about anime games? Do you think they lack replayability? Do you think game devs are not spending enough time on their games? Are they cash grabs? Do you have any other reason as to why anime games aren't blowing up as they should? Please leave it. Leave your opinion in the comments section below. I want to see what you guys think and uh, send this video to a friend, you know, a friend that likes anime games or games or anime. <laughs> but anyway, guys, uh, thanks for uh, making it this far. I am Mali Chan and uh, I will see you on the flip side.